G'day, welcome back to my Swan Diary. Today we're going to be looking at the five OEs. Uh, what areas they are, what it means and what it covers, what the signs look like so you can see them in yourself or maybe in others. Um, and then we're going to look at how that builds your OE profile um, and how you can use that to understand yourself a little bit better. Five areas of OE are psychomotor, sensual, we'll correct that term later, intellectual, imaginative, and emotional. So what do those mean? Psychomotor refers to your body. So when your brain is running really, really fast, it kicks off a lot of electrical energy. Um, you probably have seen The Matrix and you know what Morpheus says about the human body basically being a little battery and the amount of electricity that comes out. When your brain's running really fast, it's like revving an engine really hard and sometimes your body just can't help but move. And that's why some people who've got this get misdiagnosed with things like ADHD. So it's important to kind of go and get it checked out. But it's the sort of um, signs and symptoms that you kind of expect from that sort of stuff. So not being able to sleep when your brain's running. So either sleeping really short periods each night or going days sometimes without sleep. Uh, not eating very much uh, when you're, you're overstimulated in your mind. So if you're thinking something new or creating something, um, you, you might drop off eating. Um, you get nervous tics and twitches. Um, when I do a video later on psychomotor, I'm actually going to stand in my pacing spot. So when I get really <laughs> overwhelmed, I start to pace and I move my hands all the time and I can't keep them still. So uh, this is kind of why I keep my hands <laughs> down below the camera view so you can't see them twitching and, and that sort of stuff. Um, the other sorts of things that you can get in psychomotor, obviously, a love of competition, fast things, uh, compulsive behaviours and impulsive behaviours. So compulsive organising and systematising or other compulsive behaviours. So, you know, fidgeting, twitching, picking at things, um, grinding and clenching jaws, scratching, those sorts of things, nervous habits. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on in the body um, and it gives you a bit of impatience as well because your body's trying to move really fast and the, the type of people who have this will be rapid speakers and they'll be in a meeting and they'll say right let's stop talking and let's do something about it and they almost maybe jump around like Steve Irwin a little bit when they get excited about something and you know if they get very upset they'll start being overly emotive as well um, so it's all about everything that transfers through the body now sensual which is the second one which all the psychologists hate the term because they're talking about gifted kids and then they say sensual and they go oh, oh it's got nothing to do with sex um, unfortunately, when you're an adult, it kind of does. Uh, but the problem why I don't like the word is because sensual refers to gratification of the senses. Um, and it's not all about that. So I'm changing it to sensory because that just applies to the senses. So people who have sensory OE uh, love things that they love. So this is about directly about everything coming in from the outside. So people who are into visual art and music, um, Einstein, for example, absolutely loved music and said he thought in music. People who are into, really into food and those sorts of things as well. And as you can imagine, it can kind of lead to some addictive behaviours. So over-sexed, um, over-drugged, over-eating, over-drunk. Um, and, you know, I've struggled with a few of those things myself, so I, I get what that's like. And on the flip side of the coin, um, when things are bad, they're terrible. So it's apparently a common thing that people who have OE just hate wool. And I'm going to call it swan bane from now on because I absolutely can't stand the feel of wool on my skin because I have tactile sensitivity. So anything that touches me sort of irritates me. Um, so it suits me to run around in metal t-shirts and a pair of jeans because I find everything else highly uncomfortable. Clothing tags make you uncomfortable. Seams in socks, some people get bothered by that. Um, and there might be certain things that you can't wear. It also leads to things like light sensitivity. I can't go outside without sunglasses. Um, noise sensitivity as well. So you might particularly get small kids who can't bear to be in a movie theater because the, the sound's too loud. Um, and foods that you hate can you know, just cause the worst problems. Um, because either you don't like the taste or the smell or the texture um, and you can get a very quick biological response to that insofar as it can make you quite nauseous. Um, and then there's the other side of that biological response where if you're 
stimulated for some reason as an adult um, and you very rapid response to that as well um, so it's about how quickly you take it in everything from the outside world um, and how loudly it hits you the third oe is intellectual and it's kind of where you expect people with high iq to be um, it's one of the most common areas um, of people having oe uh, you get avid readers very curious always after intellectual pursuits people who can concentrate uh, at their job or something they're interested in for very long periods of time. It can present as a bit of workaholism as well. Um, and you know, you call it going into your bubble. Well, that's what my significant duck calls it. He calls it going into my bubble. Um, and so it can give you that intellectual drive, but it also can make you question things because you know, things might seem a bit too simplistic. So people who are always asking why and challenging authority and maybe you're not comfortable with, you know, how the world sees religion or education or the legal system or politics um, and you can't get your head around those sorts of things. So tend to be a bit rebellious, offbeat senses of humour. So a lot of the kids who were, you know, smart and then had spare time, you know, we ended up being class clowns and stuff, um, unable to behave ourselves because we just got bored and, you know, wanted to have a laugh. Um, so it can also make you short with everybody else. So it's like Tony Stark when he just goes, am I the only one who's done the reading? And he's got the shits with everybody except for Bruce because Bruce is the only one that makes any sense to him. So it's that kind of thing as well. The fourth one is imaginative. Um, and it's kind of like absent-minded professor syndrome. So it can make you quite creative as you can imagine um, and give you you know art and poetry and drama and, and those sorts of things that take you away into imaginary worlds fantasy fiction those sorts of things um, but it can also make you lose track of reality <laughs> so you can forget things important things like your parents birthdays yeah overblowing things in your own mind imagining worst case scenarios connecting dots that aren't there so it can make you a very suspicious person as well um, and that can impact your relationship and stuff like that when you're seeing things that just aren't there. Um, so it can create some issues as well. And as I said, it does make you very absent-minded because you go into that bubble and it's very hard to get out sometimes. Um, the last one is emotional. And I think that's the one that causes the most problems. Well, in my mind, it causes the most severe ones. So when you've got emotional OE, it means you feel everything very profoundly and very loudly. Um, so good things can, you know, send you dizzy, you know, in an ecstatic sort of fit and you, you cry with happiness and those sorts of things. Um, but trauma can also hit you really, really hard. Um, and people can get things like existential depression because they get worried about death and they're, you know, feeling bad because they're imagining worst case scenarios and so now they're feeling bad about it. Um, and it can also make you difficult to get along with, I guess, hard to have relationship with and stuff. It makes you very introverted at times, extroverted at others, um, and it can give you social anxiety and those sorts of things. Um, so that's the five areas of overexcitability. Um, you may see yourself in some of those areas. Um, and you might hear things like, you're so intense, you're very sensitive. Why are you such a perfectionist? I can't tell if you're introverted or extroverted. You're very different. Can you slow down and sit still for a minute? God, you've got a weird sense of humour. You're such a pain. Why are you so difficult? You're such a rebel. You've got no attention span. You are the dumbest part, smart person that I know. I can't even say dumbest smart person that I know. So if you've heard some of those things throughout your life, that might apply to you and you might have overexcitabilities too. And I hope someone does because I don't know any other swans at this point. So I'm really hoping to find some out there. You can you know, tell me in the comments if you are. So if you suspect that you do have OEs, what's the next step? So if it were me, I'd be confirming with myself um, whether or not I'm kind of at risk. So um, if I've already been diagnosed with something like ADHD and clinical depression, am I kind of at risk? Or, you know, do I actually sh show other signs of those things um, and should I get help? Or, you know, if you're going down the addiction road or something. But if you've eliminated that possibility, um, the next thing I would do would be take a qualitative OE test. So 
you probably find ones that are mostly for kids out there uh, because that's where the focus is but it's kind of good because you may have been conditioned through your life you know the old Pavlov's dog and classical conditioning sit still don't fidget stop twitching um you may have had some of that beaten out of you already um and if you think back to when you're a child you're you're probably a bit more raw in your behavior so that can be really good um and understanding your OAE profile is really important because the brain's all interconnected Um, and you kind of need to know how many star shaped points you have on your little peg and how big they are um, in order to resolve any issues that you might have or help yourself. Um, There's a particular test that I would take, it's a good starting place, it's at a website www.positivedisintegration.com and it's slash Bouchard 2004 test Um, and if you go to the end of the PDF the test is there. Uh, but it's a quality of one, so it's asking psychologists to rate children's behaviour one to five. So that one is a quality of test um, and it'll allow you to see what areas that you have and how badly you're kind of affected by them. Um, and it's kind of important um, to get that because when you move on to problem solving, you need to get to root causes of things. And if you don't understand your OEs properly, it um, might help you, like, sorry, it might hinder you when you're trying to put in solutions to solve your problems. The last thought I wanted to leave you with is this, um, and it's kind of a map of how I see those five areas um, of the five OEs sort of connecting in your brain. So the first area is sensory. So that's things coming in from the outside world. um, And they go directly to your emotions, which sit at the back of your head. Your emotions then send a response to your frontal lobes, where your intellect is, Um, And in the meantime, you just got to hope that your imagination doesn't bugger with everything. (laughs) Then if there's any excess electrical activity, that'll get sent out to the body. Um, And that's where you get your psychomotor OE from. So an example of that would be you hear a noise, um, your senses pick it up, your emotions feel fear because you don't know what it is. You check in with the intellect uh, and you just realize that it's someone living in your house, you know, opening a door somewhere. Um, But you might already be scared um, and now you're shaking and your body's involved in the process. So it's time for my big swan celebrity call out. Um, Today it's a historical figure um, and I'd love you to get in the comments and tell me what you think of my assessment of this. Bear in mind, not an expert, went to Wikipedia, that's about it. I'm all for not researching this stuff to be honest and saving everybody a bit of time. However, Isaac Newton, um, arguably one of the greatest minds we've ever had in history. Um, But he also showed signs, apart from his huge intellect, of having OEs. Um, He was very interested in things across a lot of areas. Um, He had a great imagination for things uh, and not just an intellectual mind. Um, And he was famously uh, very religious. However, he formed his own religious ideas. Uh, basically he kept all these thoughts on how Christianity worked in a secret little book that he had um, and was kind of worried that if anyone ever thought about his radical ideas on religion um, that he'd be in a little bit of trouble. Uh, He also got shunned by his own (laughs) scientific societies um, and he was an emotional bugger because he didn't really get along with people and he carried a grudge. Um, So he he had to be prompted basically by Halley, you know, the the comet bloke, um, to publish one of his greatest works because he was kind of shitty with it. Um, Someone called Newton once, it was a a Nobel laureate, said that Newton was a nasty antagonist and a bad man to have as an enemy. Um, And he was particularly talking about um, his attitude towards Hooke. And you can go and read up all about Newton um, and and his troubles with his scientific community. But it just sort of proved that he was a different thinker, very different. Um, He was interested in all sorts of areas. So he didn't just do work with, you know, physics um, insofar as gravitational pull. He was also into prisms and optics and that sort of stuff. Um, And the one thing I love about he's got this very um, childlike way to view his own gifts um, and his own talents. And he wrote in a memoir, I do not know what I may appear to the world, but to myself, I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore. 
and devoting myself in now and then finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than ordinary, whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. So even though he was one of the greatest minds, um, he still felt like a small child um, and probably didn't understand the extent of his own gifts or where they came from. And for being a complete moody bastard with a huge chip on your shoulder, I can completely identify with that. Newton, this episode's for you, mate. So remember, everybody, I am not an expert. This is not qualified advice in any way, shape or form. I'm just one person with OE sharing my ideas and my little swan diary in order to spread some happiness. So see you later.